Okay. We have on screen and you can use this. Okay. Okay. All good. Thank you. Thank you for your passion. So we can start. Hello everybody and welcome. This is a presentation about addressing duplicate symbol in cold scenes. And at first, let me say that I'm very happy to be speaking at the Linux Plumber Conference. Now, to break the ice, I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Alessandro Garminati, and I currently work for Red Hat, where I'm part of the team responsible for bringing up the <clears throat> new platform for Red Hat Automotive uh, Kernel, Automotive um, Distribution. Uh, before this, I worn quite a few hats. I've been a Linux-based firmware developer and a network and VoIP engineer. And as my involvement with automotive deepened, so did my uh, interest in software safety. That's why I, um, I joined the ELISA community. And if by chance someone is asking, no, ELISA isn't a girl name. It is actually an acronym that stands for enabling Linux in the safety application. Now that you know a little bit who I am, let's start with the topic I'm going to discuss today. Okay, I'll start by kicking off with a question that might seem a little bit out of the left field. So the question is, is there really a problem with duplicate symbol in the Linux kernel? Now, if you was like I, uh, I was a few years ago, your thought might be, no, nah, no way. Linux kernel is a massive, well-oiled machine. A monolithic masterpiece. Duplicate symbol? Surely not. But as I learned the hard way, the truth can be a little bit more complicated. You see, when you're talking about something as huge and complicated as the Linux kernel, it is very easy to not consider the possibility of duplicate name. After all, it is one happy family of code, isn't it? But into, hidden into the deeps, lurking like a bug, waiting for the perfect moment to strike, are this duplicate symbol. And trust me, they are real. And they are there just waiting for you to strike when you least expected. How do I know? I know because I've been beaten. It is like stepping on a Lego on the middle of the night. You don't see it coming, but when you hit, you definitely feel it. So, duplicate symbols do exist, and under the right, or should I say the wrong condition, they can cause you trouble, but Enough of the chat, let me show what exactly I'm talking about with a quick video. Here it is, no cat, I promise. Though they may be definitely be cuter. Allow me to show this video. Sorry, they changed me the terminal at last. So my preparation.
non lo posso prendere lo so che c'è uh, well I had prepared my uh, my link for the, with the other PC and I hadn't prepared for this so I am I am I need to copy it again here Ok, thank you. There is no audio for the, from the The audio from the video is not possible. What? Well, the audio has the video, and I, I tried yesterday. So, well, I need to comment it on. So, let's see if it start. Start. Started. No. It is not even the only thing that go. It doesn't work. I see here this change, but in any case, let's see if it writes something. So here I'm trying to see what if there is really any uh, duplicate in the kernel, and this is the list of the duplicate. So now I'm wondering how much duplicate there are, and apparently there are so many. So I would be concerned if there were less, but this many needs to be to consider. And at this point, I want to see which kind of duplicate are these. And I, try, I pick this name show that is a common source of duplicate. And this is a list of duplicate of the same name. Now, the next question is understanding if this function are actually the same function or different function. And here, you can see that this function came from different files which means that they have the same name, but they are actually different function. And so what else we can expect from this kind of thing? Let's see, for example, another example source of duplicate. Yeah, please use a mic. Hmm? Use a mic. Oh, use a mic. <coughs> So yes, In, this is another common source of duplicate, which is DWT bright L, and uh, I now I'm wondering uh, what kind of duplicate are these, because the previous one were different. So this one came from another file, picking another one, it came from another, uh, from another file, but it's the same file which means that this probably is the same function. So let's check if this is true. This is the assembly of this function, and this is the assembly of the other function. Now, to be sure they are the same image, I try to compare this. this. And this is the comparison. If you see, there is a little difference between the two. This difference is actually due to the fact that these two functions are located in two different places in memory. Because if you see at the object code, the object code is identical. So you have two identical functions in two parts different of the kernel. Now let's see another source of duplicate function, which is the elf load, 
which is another uh, outstanding example that I want to show you. Here it is. So we have two instances of the elf load, and these two instances of the elf load. So now we know that duplicate symbols are lurking around the kernel, like gremlins into the code. So the next question is, why should we care? For the average user, this may seem like a non-issue. They can have a life long and prosper without even worrying about duplicate symbol. And honestly, I invite those people sometimes, but, and there's always a but, there are certain situations when this duplicate can become a real gig. So let's put an example. Let's say that you are tracing for a kernel, a kernel to trace a bug. You think you found your culprit, and just to confirm your thought, you set up a trace for a function that, if you write, needs to be called. Sadly, it doesn't happen. Does that mean that your theory is wrong? It is a possibility, yes, you can be wrong. But you also need to consider the possibility that another function with the same name can be there and be in tracing in place of the right one. Seems unlikely. I'll give you another. Imagine that you are in a production environment and that you need to replace a function on a live system. Live patching, they call it. Do you feel safe knowing that you might be replacing the wrong one? I've been in both those situations, and let me tell you, it wasn't pretty at all. I was wrestling with an interrupt issue on ARM, and I had this brilliant idea to trace a gig function. There were no official live patch support for ARCH64 at the time. I think that it is not this, uh, available yet. In any case, it took me a while to figure in why the function that was supposed to be called in fact, wasn't. It turns out that Geek exists in several versions, each one having at least its driver. And you have at least two versions of this driver in each distribution. And, surprise, surprise, the functions this driver provides are the same set. So, while most users can ignore this problem, if you are dealing with bug tracing or live patching, this duplicate symbol can spice up your life. Back to the question I throw at this slide beginning. Because they cause trouble, if not me, someone should definitely care about this problem. OK, so now we established that, that duplicate symbols are a problem and that we should care about them. The next question is, why do this duplicate symbol even exist? I mean, the kernel is a monolithic application. It is not something you'd expect. I, expe I expect. Rather, you think, I think, that everything would be neat and orderly, but evidently quite not. Someone could also say, someone like me, the kernel is a monolithic, any place is reachable, which is true. But thank goodness it is not built from a single massive file, or else my brain would have melt a long ago. Instead, it is built from an enormous source, a number of source files, each one compiled into an object and then linked it together. Now, here, is where things get interested. Symbol can be, can be declared static or not, but the linkers only care about static linker, which means that you can have two, three, four static symbols with the same name in different compilers unit, and nobody bats an eye. But there is more. Header can also sneak in duplicate symbol by defining data symbols or small inline function. And here's the kicker. Header file um, compilers unit don't always follow the inline directive. And when this happens, 
the inline function becomes a regular one. So now try to guess what happened if multiple file, multiple header are included in multiple file. You got yourself a few copy of the same function, uh, one for any object included in the header, the name and all the rest. If not enough, there are also some special little acts here and there being there for ages where a file includes another C file, and by playing with macros, slightly different file functions are created with the same name. This happened, for example, in the compact bin fmt elf.c. It is a clever trick, I'll give you that, but it's that kind of cleverness that keep up at, uh, at night wondering why on earth someone could ever think that it was a good idea. Now, let's dive into the rare case in the world of duplicate, the infamous include C file scenario. This one is a bit special and deserves some extra attention. Most sorts of duplicate symbol are fairly straightforward, but when a C file includes another C file, things get messy. First off, let me reassure you, it isn't a common practice, thankfully. In fact, it affects only about 0.4% of the, uh, the kernel source file. Most of these aren't even popular file or driver that you see in every distribution. But there is one notable exception. Uh, it is this compact binfmt elf.c. So what's the deal with this file? Well, it is a clever trick that allows 64-bit kernel to support 32-bit elf files, reusing the existing code. Including a C file pulls in all the code exactly when you include another file. But instead of bringing along some small data or small supposed to be inline function, this includes a full-fledged beast. The resulting artifact can contain functions that aren't identical because are modified by macros. And let me tell you, seeing different functions coming from, different, from the same C file can drive you li a little bit nuts. So what's the problem with this? When this file gets included, they carry the same origin, which will be identical for all the, the object or gem produced by the compilation. At this stage, it might not seem a big deal or even why this could be a problem, since I haven't fully reveal my strategy yet. Thankfully, I've also a mitigation up my sleeve. By using the preprocessor line instruction, we can modify the debug information included in the object file and make it appear as they come from different file. Here you see a QR code to the um, repository where I put a POC of this um, solution, if anyone is curious. So, now, looking back at the other cause of duplicate symbol, you may wonder if the link time optimization or LTO can help reduce this issue. The part of the problem partially stems on how the code is compiled separately and then linked together, with optimization happening only at the compiler unit level and not at the final binary. Now, both GCC and CLANG do support LTO, but as far as I know, the upstream kernel can only be built using LTO if built by LLVM. So can, LVM, um, can LTO save us from the headache of duplicate symbol? Well, it depends but it doesn't solve uh, completely the issue. Its impact also varies by the type of LTO used, because with LLVM you can uh, use either, LLV, um, either um, monolithic LTO and TIL LTO. With monolithic LTO, merge, um, you have the process merging everything into a one big model, 
while DLTO and TNLTO splits the work by generating summary for each module and then using only the summary to produce the final uh, binary. Now, I won't debate which is better here, nor I'm an expert to do so, but in terms of symbol name, they behave quite differently. With TNLTO, you may see mangle name like nameshow.llvm dot some sort of ashes. This happened because function in line and across unit, they take a function from a unit and in line into another, have their local reference to be made global because otherwise it wouldn't work. And doing this, the, this function, this uh, local function, get promoted to be global causing their name change, to change. However, TNLTO doesn't reduce duplicate much, and you might still end up with a pile of them, even the one in the, in the other files. Monolithic LTO, on the other hand, tend to produce unique symbol, adding a numeric suffix to, to the name to make them distinct. Does it mean it solved the problem? Well, it depends from which is the problem you are tackling. If your goal is just to avoid duplicate, yes, it resolved the problem. But if you need to identify which specific function instance you are dealing with, it is still tricky. Imagine this. You want to trace name show from epv 4 routec and after the compilation with monolithic LTO, its name would be nameshow.76351 alongside 15 other similar names, only differing for the number. Good luck finding it. So, we talked a lot about duplicate symbol name, but here's another plot twist. Sometimes you can also have duplicate address within the call sim table, just to make us not miss anything. Now, it is really, really relevant to our mining topic, but it, I think it is worth mentioning. You often see this more with data symbol than with text symbol. And why I haven't dealt too deep into the text side of the thing, for data this usually happens when you have zero-sized object. Take the example in this slide. Here, the culprit is that lock class key becomes zero-sized if the config log depth is not defined. So you end up with multiple symbols pointing at the same address. And just like that, we got more duplicate to deal with. It is almost like the kernel version of this buy one and get another free, except that nobody's really asking for the extra item. So, what do I propose to address this duplicate symbol? The idea is to create aliases for symbols that appear to be duplicate. You may wonder, why aliases? Because duplicate exists from forever, and changing things suddenly can create more problems than it solves. As said, duplicate symbols have been around for a long time, and tools um, around the kernel tracing over the years have found their way to deal with this. Take, for example, LivePatch. They have added a function called call sim on each match symbol that allows them to navigate symbol with the same name and choose the one they need. Looking at the code, you can also see functions like compare symbol name that address the LTO newly produced symbol name. Those cute names we talked about earlier that thin LTO scatter along the way when it promotes to go the, to global static declare function. In any case, the alias strategies allow existing method to continue as they did, unmodified. Meanwhile, the alias aware flow can exploit the new feature and locate the symbol directly. Okay, so how to tag symbols? When it, uh, when it comes to tagging name, there is one interesting challenge we need to consider. You can end up with duplicate symbol 
even within a single compiler unit, which is the trick. The trick is declaring a static variable inside a function. This allows a variable to be placed in the data section, but keep its name within the function namespace, avoiding conflict in the object namespace. In other words, you can have multiple identifiers with the same name in the same source file. It is less common, but also possible. You can have duplicate function name within the same compiler unit if you use nested function. The reasoning behind that is similar. Function namespace don't conflict with the object namespace. Thankfully, the, we are unlikely to see the, this nested function in the kernel code. This because the nested function are a GCC only feature. And more important, using them may require an executable stack to, ge to generate the trampoline for calling them. And let's just say that executable stack is not something that you'd want in the kernel stack, unless you are working in the black hack inc. So, the compiler mangles name to avoid duplicate, because they are smart, but in, within the, the same compiler unit. But identify symbol can be still tricky, even if they are mangled. So what can we best do to tag this symbol? The best option I have found is to tag the symbol with the source file and line number. This ensures that each symbol is unique and provides enough in detail to identify it, even if it is in the same compiler unit. However, there is a downside. The resulting name may not be portable across kernel version since both source file and line number can change from a version to another. But within a given version, it is a reliable way to distinguish between numbers, between symbol name. Plus, getting the file name and line number is really easy. Just like using address to line within a target uh, uh, VM Linux, yes. So, um, having found this problem in one piece of code in the Zen hypervisor, you can actually get a repeated uh, file name and line number if you've got seven, two static inline functions in a single macro. That was a really nasty one to figure out. But inline function doesn't end up in a symbol name. No, but you can still end up with reference references to it when they're, if, so if it's taken by function pointer, you still, um, you, you still end up out of lining it. And it, that matters if you need to patch that function. So even though it's declared static inline, you, it, the compiler can still out of line it as part of code generation. Yes. And, and, and we, we ended up with the duplicate alias because of that and even tagging with uh, line numbers didn't work. I'm not clear your... I, I, I rewrote the code not to be in a macro. That was easier than trying to figure out that. Code. Yeah, possibly yes, but if you have um, an, uh, a, static, a static that becomes a regular function, it is a regular function. So you are in, end up in the same situation that you have with, uh, for example, the header file. When an, in an header file you uh, declare a static um, inline function, and you end up in having the same function in various places in the kernel. Yes, when but, but, but the line macro is the same in both of them, because, it, because, because of preprocessing, it's one huge Oh, line. because you mean the inline is the first f function? Yeah. Oh, I see your point. <laughs> As I said, it was easier to rewrite that one piece of code than it was to deal with the rest of the corner code. Yes, but the infamous C file and the infamous include C file is even nastier mm. in any case. However, thank you for the tip. <laughs> okay, moving forward. How to implement this? 
Let's take a closer look at the current pipeline in the Linux system, in the Linux build system that used to create VM Linux and it used to generate call scenes. For those who may not know, call scenes is centered around the good old bin utils and M utility, which provides the raw data that will eventually be included in the call scenes output. At the time of the VM Linux linker, linking, some script kick in and produce the system.map and the call sims data. The call sims data that can convert to be fit into an object file. My proposal would be to tap into this existing pipeline and add aliases. This process would ensure that the kernel main image has this new feature without altering too much the build system or the object file. The diagram you see here shows the current pipeline and highlights where this modification would be made. Okay, so how to handle the same problem in module? So far we I've shown how to tag duplicate symbol in the kernel image using adder to line. But the idea to is to tap the, the build process and tweak the NM data on the fly. But when it comes to handling the same issue in the kernel modules, things seems won't fit. It is more like when you try to assemble a furniture from a well-known Swiss dish manufacturer, but without distraction. First, uh, to properly tag the kernel image and modules, all the object needs to be ready before we can even think about creating aliases. So at the VM Linux link time, we have to have all the object ready. Now, the kernel build process doesn't usually guarantee this, but fortunately, there are already a precedent with BTF information which require exactly this step. In the furniture analogy, it's like having a friend who already navigated the Swedish maids and you can just follow their lead. But there is another kicker. Adding aliases to a kernel module isn't as straightforward as it might seem. <coughs> Reusing the VM Linux strategy as is just won't work because there is no NM data to modify. However, since the kernel module is essentially just an elf object within a built-in symbol module, you have something to mess up. And again, in the furniture analogy, it's like big discovering that the missing pieces was hiding under the couch the whole time. Just, to, just for the record, I do really love furniture. Not that I have much to say, my wife makes sure of this. Now, okay, so now I have another problem with the out of three modules and uh, <clears throat> in order to address this, I <clears throat> we need to have a file with the statistic of the previous building. And uh, the, the current implementation do provide this new file <coughs> that is added to have the, um, the thing. But there is a problem. And the problem is that if you have a new uh, build, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, the problem is that when you compile a new module, on a, a new module, if the previous build doesn't have any duplicate for that specific uh, symbol, the new module will have a, uh, an alias while the old one doesn't. And this is something that needs to be a little bit of attention. So this is the how call scenes look in the current implementation at the version seven of my patch. 
and this is the list of the current issue that I have. So, the, the one of the issues that I have is that I don't play nicely with the current make file, make file. And this is something that I need to address. The, una, another issue is this, the current implementation doesn't use the LTO man, Manglet symbol. They are considered different. <coughs> another, uh, another issue that I may want to add is that, um, is that misleading information that are in the include uh, C file scenario. But the thing that I most care of is know what the community thinks about this effort, because without this, it is not wise to continue this effort. So at this point, we reach the end of this presentation. I hope this didn't leave anyone chasing duplicate talks after the, all this symbol talk. If you have any question, I'm here to answer. I have a question about the, uh, the line number in the pass uh, addition. Um, even if we are adding the line number and pass, uh, let's say that uh, it's a kind of namespace, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, for the, uh, your, your elf load example, uh, we have a uh, summer symbol which is, what's it, that are delivered from the, the same, uh, what's it, that source code. And yes. Yeah, it, what, we can do that. Yes, we can do this by using this trick here. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> this trick here. So, the trick here is to add, is to use the dash line uh, directive and change the, uh, the debug information according to the same macro that changed the function. So you have a function that depends, the, its content depends of, um, on a symbol. And you use the same exact symbol to change the debug information. For example, to add uh, a tag or something to notify that that symbol is different from the other. So the original one and the compact one, to say un an example. Using this, you may differentiate also in this, but you need to change the source code of the compact binfmt.c, sorry. Thank you. In the uh, QR, there is a POC of this precise problem. But if you want a uh, more detailed explanation, tomorrow at the PERF uh, tracing microconference, I'll be uh, showing the problem that the current implementation have and the idea that I have to solve them. Any other question? Thank you for your attention. <laughs>